This guys is called learning. Anybody can do it if you did a little bit of research. Now I decided that I'm gonna do the quarter panel and I am learning off of YouTube right now. All right, you guys, so welcome back to the channel. And today, we're gonna be experimenting. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this car back and uh, I'm gonna set up an old hood that I have right here so we can practice using the stud gun. Wanna give a big shout out to my buddy Tony from Wild Cards once again for letting me borrow his stud gun kit. It comes with everything I need to uh, use it. The gun, the hammer, the pliers to remove the stud, brand new studs, and used studs. Now I've never used it before, but with a lot of uh, YouTube learning, I'm pretty confident that I could do it. And I have this old hood that used to be on my brother's car. And uh, he scored this blue hood from the junkyard. So this hood right here came off the uh, RT four wheel drive a couple months ago that I bought that was converted to front wheel drive and sold. So this hood is all dinked up pretty bad. What I'm pretty much gonna do is uh, grind it all down to bare metal and just kind of practice using the gun, get comfortable with it. So I'm gonna move things around real quick, get set up and uh, let's start learning. All right, guys, so I'm getting the camera all set up right here, and uh, the only thing I'm worried about is once I put these studs in and I start using a slide hammer to pull out, pull out, I'm afraid the hood is gonna move all over the place because it's not bolted to the car and uh, it's not stabilized. So I'm gonna try my best to learn on this with it moving everywhere, and um, I'm gonna get all my tools real quick. So. Online, I was kind of reading about this is pretty bad like this This is not supposed to be here this giant hump and the uh, the line in the front of the hood right here is completely gone, so I'm gonna have to mark out where that line is supposed to be at. This is a giant high spot I'm not sure if I could just push down on it. I think it'll be worse if I push down on it, but definitely a learning curve so uh, according to the videos, sand is down to bare metal so that way the stud gun could um, find bare metal to weld to. For one video, it said start on the outside and work your way in towards the, um, the lowest point. And then there are some videos that says start at the lowest point, the low spot. The low spot is pretty much the valley of the dent. So, um, like, I would start right here instead of on the skirt of the dent. It's all about massaging the panel back to its former shape. I'm gonna use a heavy flap disc because I don't care about this hood for one and two. I don't have any deep grit sandpaper like 40 or 60. So I'm gonna use whatever I have to get this down to bare metal. Damn, that's a lot of freaking spot. <laughs> I'm probably gonna skip around some of these uh, markings and uh, I'll know where to put another stud once I start pulling it out. So uh, let's get started. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the stud into the gun, right? This won't activate until you ground it out to the uh, body panel and you hold the trigger down while depressing this all the way flush and hold the trigger down for no more than two seconds. So before I carry on, I'm gonna try pulling this one out first. Now using this puller, you're gonna have to put the stud in and then you're gonna have to lock it in place before pulling the slide hammer backward to pull that dent out. Now whenever you have a high spot, which is this guy right here. You wanna tap it down on the hammer while pulling it out. So it kinda fix the dent in the place. Once you remove this, it doesn't bow back, if that makes any sense, but this is a high spot, super high spot. Now again, this is super hard to do because the hood moves. Wow, that's actually not bad at all. 
All right, damn, that is progress, guys. Hell yeah. Now, to remove these, because you could reuse them without breaking the tip off, what you gotta do is get one of these, uh, what do you call these, pliers. So what you do is you grip it in front of the head, right? And then you twist. So it comes off like this. And this right here allows you to reuse it because that part right there is what welds to the body panel. So again, crimp it in front of the head and twist. Wow, I, I am really stoked. Now all of this, you can grind off and any part that's a high spot, you can always use your hammer to tap it back down a little at a time. And uh, the rest could be filled in with body filler. So the whole purpose of this is to not use a glob of bondo to fill in a big old dent. The best way to go about it is to pull out most of the dent and then use lightweight body filler. So that way vibration or people leaning on the car or whatever the case is, it's not going to crack as easily as it would if it was a glob of bondo under the paint. So, I had to take a quick pause to show you guys some progress. This whole front side right here is not that giant dent anymore and uh, I'm not sure this corner right here, it's still a low spot, but it's a flat low spot, you know what I mean? I feel like it needs to pop out a little bit more, but it's definitely uh, progress and this dent right here uh, is pulled out as well. I'm happy about this one. I can't figure out if this is a high spot or it's just a paint because uh, it is layered of paint and uh, it's obviously grinded down to bare metal so there is a little lip here I haven't got to these guys yet because I wanted to make sure that uh, you know I know what I'm doing here before I get down to the deeper uh, dents over here I did say earlier that I didn't have any uh, deep sandpaper but I found this in my drawer although this is a sticky type and this is velcro I think it'll work out just fine so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna sand all of this down to bare metal and try to feather out the uh, paint so that way I don't feel this uh, um, like layer right here I become more and more impressed the more these dents pop out. Every wagon owner knows there's always this dent that shows it right here, not sure why, but every wagon, mine, this one, my brothers, the ones before, my brown one, they all have this dent right here on the passenger hood. Not sure what causes it or if it's like a manufactured defect, but I got it pulled out. Everything here feels really nice and straight other than the high spot of the stud itself. So I'm gonna have to tap these guys down. And uh, tomorrow I'm gonna continue this because I kinda wanna um, get my body filler after getting this all nice and straight to the best of my abilities and all the high spot tap down, I'm gonna use body filler to fill it all in. And I think this hood is gonna be kind of like a testament to see if I still got it because I haven't done body work in a long time. And I kind of have some old Rage Extreme body filler that I wanna kill off um, before I go buy some new ones for the uh, EJ2. But I wanna, I wanna try to, in this video, get this hood to be as straight as possible and um, like I said to see if I still got it and uh, if I can save this hood then I'm gonna prime it stack it over there with the other one then I'll have two spare hoods so we're gonna continue this tomorrow guys I'm gonna tinker with this a little bit more and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow Okay guys, so it is a new day and uh, today we're gonna try to lay down some body filler. So I massaged um, a lot of these areas yesterday to ensure that most of the high spot is 
is not high anymore and uh it's looking really good now this one took a lot of beating because it was a giant hump here and i didn't know how to knock it down make it stay down and make it flat but uh it's flat i mean how it feels right here it's pretty flat other than filling the valley the the low spot which is okay you can fill in the low spot as long as not a glob of bondo um, you know slapping a bunch of bondo on a big old dent I tried my best to pull out most of the metal and a little dent being filled in with bondo is not gonna hurt anything So I got some old rage gold. I thought I had the rage extreme, but rage gold It's literally like down here and uh, it's really old But I'm gonna send it anyways because I don't know if I'm ever gonna use this hood for anything But um, I at least want to straighten it out for the most part found some hardener we got some spreaders i bought from harbor freight a while back and i'm going to use this to mix my filler on because i don't i don't have vinyl paper and i don't i don't I, I mean i have cardboard but so body filler it's really easy to use um lightweight because it cuts easier and uh, i prefer these brands over the actual bono brand but you can use the bono brand without a problem it's just your preference but um, mixing it, it's not that hard at all. I believe, I'm not even going to say it. I'm just going to put it on the screen right here. The ratio for filler to hardener. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just mix them up right now. And uh, let's get applying. Junk. Okay guys, so I took off to my local auto body shop and I uh, went to go pick up some body filler. I've used Rage Extreme before, like 10 years ago. I've used Rage Gold, which I just threw away. And this is the uh, the first one, it's just called the Rage. Now the difference between the three body filler is the filler itself. Now I don't know like 100% What's the difference? But the guy at the paint shop told me the Rage, the Rage Gold, the Rage Extreme, the more you pay, the less pinholes you get. When you do body work and you're sanding them down, uh, pinholes gonna pop up, which you typically knew spot putty for. And uh, because this is just a flip card for me, and these are expensive locally, I just went with the basic Rage. Now, again, like I said before, it doesn't hurt to apply more than one layer of filler as long as you're sanding them down. So uh, this will do the job. I also got high bill primer. I'm just shooting it out of a can for right now. I do have a gallon of sealer uh, in case I decide to use it to prime the whole hood. But uh, my goal, like I said, is just to do the body work side of things. So typically when your body filler does not get enough hardener or it's old, like in my case, it doesn't dry. When it doesn't dry, this was applied 45 minutes ago and left here in the sun. When it doesn't dry, you have to remove the body filler to start all over again. So I've already scraped off these guys right here, ready for uh, fresh body filler. And I just gotta take this off right here. So attempt number two, here we go. Body work is a tedious process and I cheated my way through with a uh, DA sander. So uh, when I do the DJ2 coupe, I'm gonna use a uh, sanding block, but what I use the DA for is to cut down the layer of filler. And uh, once it gets close to the panel itself, then I start blocking it. You guys saw earlier that the filler was painted with black, which is used as a guide coat because it leaves stuff like this where it'll tell you uh, what to do next after sanding when uh, you see the black paint still 
on the filler after sanding that means that this is a crater it's called a low spot now the high spot is the silver spot here this is a higher point in the body panel that needs to be tapped down and refilled so because this sticks out higher than the rest of the filler um, itself this gets sanded off the most so as you can see there's a lot of them well actually yeah this this is slightly slightly higher but not by much this is low this is high you can see right here that little black that's a low spot it needs to be slightly glazed over this right here is a pinhole this is the high spot so on and so forth so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fill it up one more time hopefully it's the last time after uh knocking these suckers in real quick and then we'll sand it one more time before we prime it so you know as i'm just chilling here waiting for this to dry up before i final sand it and then primer it i just want to quickly say that i didn't i didn't go to school for this uh to learn to learn all this um the mechanical background the bodywork side of things uh the, the car stuff my brother got me into it the bodywork stuff my dad got me into it and um i just kind of like expanded my knowledge by doing a lot of research i did go to college for automotive but i didn't go for like ccoc for bodywork welding none of that stuff that was all self-taught and if i could do it i'm sure you guys can too it all starts with the research button so um right now i am looking at this hood and it is looking a ton better than when we first started it now i did uh apply a little bit of glaze on the areas that i didn't have to touch i am still going to use a da sander because i'm going to send it and uh this is this is dried already i'm just letting the paint dry it real quick and then we'll uh, sand it one last time before we close out this video guys so i had to finish this by hand because my brother's sleeping so i put the compressor away and uh it's it's ready for primer so there's still a little low spot like right here all these little silver spot or small little high spots i'm not worried about it like i said this is just a test hood to see if i still got it i'm confident that i can do the ej2 now and we kind of saved this hood because this hood if you guys saw in the earlier clip it was trash literally there was a giant dent here there was no line here i redid all of that and all of these are nice and smooth this is high build primer it's kind of like 2k so it's pretty thick it's not as thick as if you was to shoot this through the gun but it is thick enough from being a can and i'm pretty much just going to go over the repaired area and give it probably like two layers and anything that's like open metal so we don't get surface rust so i'm going to go ahead and just mist this nice and uh even here and then let it dry and then i'm going to hit it again what i want to do is i want to drown the uh the filler itself what I mean by drown is shouldn't be able to see it through the primer. So that's my goal with this. Maybe two, maybe even three layers. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, layer all of this with primer. Three layers of primer and the filler is drowned out. Uh, not fully, but to the eye. You guys can't even see it on camera. Now, I didn't expect this hood to be super straight. You can't really see it either, but the line is super straight up until about right here about two inches it's bulging out because this used to be a giant dent but definitely a lot better than uh when we first started looks really good can't see it because of the color as well but um i can assure you guys this is a lot straighter than when we first started this is nice and straight this is nice and straight probably not going to paint the rest of that because i don't need to so we're good here. All of this is primered so the elements don't get to it and cause surface rust so I can store it inside or outside and not have to worry about it. So I still kind of got it. I am very limited on material. I literally had to run around uh, in my drawer to find the right grit sandpapers, but definitely, definitely going to tackle the EJ2. I hope it comes out just as good, if not better than what we did today on the hood and uh, probably going to start on it tomorrow. But be sure to hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see that. Definitely hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this learning curve video with me. And also, be sure to check out the builttodrive.bigcartel.com. We have tank tops for the summer so you guys can rock the build to drive while you guys are out there at the meets, at the shows, wherever it is. The beach, if you guys have a beach. But definitely check out the website. Cop yourself some merch. It'll help support us a lot here on the channel. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. 
and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.